Listen, today I'm going to teach a message that um, could challenge you. And the title of this message is The Role Demons Play. And I've been doing a series on the midweek on spiritual warfare. We've talked about that how we don't fight against flesh and blood. We've talked about the power in the name of Jesus. We've talked about that we need to understand the authority that God has given us and that Jesus gave us. And tonight, we're going to talk about the role demons play. And, and I want to say this, everybody online and here, I'm going to talk a little bit about the spirit of jealousy and the spirit of homosexuality. And the reason I'm going to talk about a little bit, one, just a little bit, one more than the other, is because it's destroying the very fabric of our nation. Every nation that has embraced homosexuality, go back and look in history, it just ended. They just ended. And this will go against everything you're hearing in the media and the culture. But we've got to learn what the Bible actually teaches us. And I know there's lots of people in here that have family members and brothers and sisters. And my goal and my, my desire is not to offend you in any way, but to give you information. And if you believe the Bible, you will take it, receive it, study it out for yourselves, and then come hopefully to a biblical conclusion that it's wrong. And God didn't do it to anybody. And so Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 3 reads, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that old serpent who is the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore. Until the thousand years were finished, afterward he must be released for a little while. So what happens is, after the tribulation, New Jerusalem comes down, Satan is thrown into a pit for a thousand years, and there'll be people survive and live through the tribulation. Hopefully we that are here will be caught up with the Lord in heaven, right? And so, or, you know, if we've already died, you know, our bodies will be caught up, and we'll be with the Lord. And so Satan, because we'll be governing, you'll have a job in heaven. I don't know why people don't have a job now. You, you're going to have a job in heaven. You need to go to work. We need to quit living off this government. And if you need the government to help you, I get that. But, but man, you, we ought to strive for financial independence from this governor, government and governor. Anyway, so that's another thing. But anyway, he'll be released for a season, and there'll be people that will still follow him after being with the Lord for a thousand years. And so that's what this is referring to. But what I want you to hear is that there is a devil, there is Satan, and some of the names they gave him. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Now verse 10 talks about we need to forgive. And so this is talking about church discipline. It, when you go through the whole contest, it's talking about how we discipline in church. And church discipline is meant to restore, not to harm and hurt. And what people have used church discipline to do is to condemn, beat up, and kick out. Now, we have removed some people from our church, but it wasn't really church discipline. They were just unruly. They were rowdy. They were just doing crazy stuff. Someone walked in here and wore a T-shirt. The other day, a Black Lives Matter, and our security said, you can't wear that in here. We don't believe in that. We don't believe in that. Do we believe Black Lives Matter? Absolutely. Do we believe in the organization? I've done a whole teaching on it. It's evil. It's not for black people. It's just against America. And so, do we believe people matter? Absolutely. But we won't, we won't let them advertise in here. And then he was trying to talk to people in church, and they said, no, you can't. You're not in. This is not that place. This is the house of God, which we should all be, be receiving and say, this is, this is how we do, this is how we act in, in the house. No more than if you wore a Ku Klux Klan shirt, we wouldn't let you wear that in here either. So if you're part of that organization, you can't wear a t-shirt, don't. You'll be removed or asked to go change. See, we, we, this is not the place to do that. This is the place to learn about God. And so... We understand 
that Satan can get an advantage over us if we're ignorant of his ways. Ephesians 6.11 says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. He has a strategy, and one of his main strategies is to deceive and get us to believe things that aren't true, to get us to act in a certain way and just call it, well, that's human nature, instead of influenced by demons. Now, I want to say this because I always have to preface it. I'm not saying there's a demon under every rock. I'm not saying there's a demon under everything. When I, years ago when I got saved, you know, they would have meetings where they would cast the devil out of people and put trash cans and say, you got to throw them up. They didn't throw up, so they still got the devil. If you throw up, you don't have the devil. I thought it was of the devil for me to throw up ever. <laughs> I mean, you ate, you know, whatever you ate the night before that made you sick, how many of y'all think, I'll never eat that again ever? And then about three months later, you're like, okay, I'll eat it. And so, so we, we understand we have an enemy, but we need to understand how he operates. And a lot of things we call mental illness may be mental illness, because I believe if your arm can be broke, your brain can get broke. But a lot of it is demonic. But we don't recognize that because we've intellectualized the gospel, or we become spiritual gluttons, where all we want to do is talk about how much we know, but we don't act on any of it. That's why when, listen, that's why when people come and meet with me and they're running for office and the first thing they say, if the first thing comes out of their mouth, they're a Christian, I'm turned off. Because really, whether you're a Christian or not, I just want to know what you believe. And they think because they say that, that I'm okay with that, but then that conjures up a whole lot of other questions. Like, okay, if you're a believer, what church do you go to? Do you go to a church that supports you or not? And if they don't support them, I won't help them. Do you tithe? Do you serve? And I've yet to have one say yes if I've asked them. So I'm thinking, so you're not really a, you're a believer in name only thinking that's what I want to hear. <laughs> I, I've met some people who are Christians who stand up for what's right. And I've met some Christians who don't stand up for anything. And so we, we need to understand, but there's an enemy out there that's destroying people's lives. And in our Christian life, we battle against rulers and authorities, the powerful evil forces of fallen angels headed by the devil or Satan, who is a vicious fighter. And we must all learn to depend on God's strength. So we are at war. Some of us don't even realize you're at war. Satan hates you and wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy all of us. We're in a fight. That's why the Apostle Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. You're in a war. There's a fight for the very fabric of your, uh, your family, your home, this state, this country. And God raised up this country. He's the one that raised it up to be a light, a beacon, and protect the whole world. And when people try to make us evil, have we done bad things? Yes, we've done bad things. You know why we've done bad things? Because we're human beings. But is it still the greatest nation ever? No one has the problem with borders that America does. Because people want to live here. Why? Because it's still the place where dreams can happen. We just got to get better leadership. We, the church needs to rise up and be the church. We need to understand that you're in a war. And there's an unseen world out there that is at work and is very busy. If we could see in it, there'd be angels and demons. But there's an unseen world that's real. And it's out there. See, demons influence and deceive people into believing things that are not biblical, that are not true. He wants to penetrate your thinking until he has built a fortress, which the Bible calls in the King James a stronghold. In the book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, it's a stronghold, which means fortress. And he wants to build up a stronghold or a fortress in your mind that will take a lot of work and the word of God to get rid of. And we were all raised, most of us weren't raised in church and the ones that were, you know, we probably didn't pay much attention. And so we build up strongholds in our life. And those fortresses cause us to think a certain way and see a certain way. It causes us to view life a certain way. 
And the word of God comes and says, we need to break down those strongholds, those imaginations that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And we have to use the word of God to knock those things down, to begin to fight back. See, there's another world beyond this physical world that we all can see, and it's the spiritual world. It's where God operates. It's, 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 the, it's the world we cannot see but is real. And so there is another world, again, besides this physical world, and it's the spiritual world. And the devil, or diabolos, I think that's how you say it. I know you'd say it in Spanish, diablo, but this is from the Greek. And I'm, I'm not very good. Usually I don't even try because I mess it up. It means slander and accuser. Satan is an adversary, and it also means to lie in wait. So he roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. It says like. He is not. He's a putty cat. Come on. We didn't even get that one. Tweety Bird. Come on. I thought I thought a putty cat. Okay. I don't know where this stuff comes from. <laughs> so the New Testament uses the word devil, which basically means Satan, 35 times. The word demon is used 61 times. And demon means evil spirit. So where do de demons come from? Who are demons? Some believe in the pre-Adamic race. And if you do, that's great. Uh, I'm not fighting that one way or the other. I just know they're real. Some believe in a pre-Adamic race, that these are disembodied entities, and then they, you know, they died, and then now they want to get back in body. Some believe that, even though I don't believe the Bible really says much about it. But people believe that, and that's okay. Um, others believe they're fallen angels. So I believe there are some angels that were bound and some angels that were loosed, and they understand this spiritual realm. And regardless of where they come from, because I don't want to have that debate, they exist, and their mission is to deceive to steal, kill, and destroy people's lives, their well-being, their health, their entire life. That's their goal. Their goal is to keep you from heaven, to keep you from worshiping your creator. Their goal is to keep you from believing in God and start believing lies. That's why we have to pray over our own thinking sometimes and say, God, help me not to be deceived. See, evil is always a perversion a prostitution of the good. God only creates good. He created the heavens and the earth. He created you know, the garden. He created man and, and, and made woman out of man, created all the animals, and he said, man, it's all good. God only creates good. He never creates evil. Evil comes from things that are good, and people pervert them or prostitute them. But God does not create evil. Even though you could read and you say, well, Isaiah 45, 7, I, God, create evil. That, what it's really referring to in, in the whole scripture is that God creates the corrective punishment for sin. In other words, there's a punishment for sin. If you live in sin, you never repent, you never get born again, you will die one day because we'll all die, and then you will go to hell. Well, I don't want to hear about that. Well, it doesn't matter whether you want to hear or not, that's where you're going to end up if you don't get born again and begin to serve God. Doesn't mean you have to be perfect because there's nobody perfect. But we need to understand God does not create evil. Evil is always good or truth that has been debased and prostituted. For example, a judge can be corrupted, a policeman can be bought off, money can be used to destroy, sex can be perverted, alcohol can become a curse. Every one of these has been prostituted because in and of itself, they aren't evil. But if they're prostituted, corrupted, bought off, used wrong, it can be evil. And so, for instance, alcohol is a great medium for medicine. I don't know if you guys know, but a lot of medicine uses some kind of alcohol. How many of y'all use vanilla extract? You know it's full of alcohol, right? You know people on the street sometimes, they'll go buy vanilla extract and drink it. So if you ever drink a bottle of vanilla extract, go out and drive, cop pulls you over, says, man, it was just vanilla extract. <laughs> See how that does you. 
Sex was meant to bless mankind. The problem with sex really is the church. And you say, why is it the church? Because for years and years and years, decades, the church made it evil. They said, well, the world made it perverted. Yeah, because the church didn't talk enough about it. And the people of God were telling their kids, it's bad, it's no good. And what we should be teaching our kids, it's incredible. I, for every married couple in here, I highly recommend it. We should tell them how great it is, but it's for marriage. But when you tell them it's bad and no good, and then they go experiment and say, this was pretty good, then, then you've lost them because now they realize you've lied to them. But we get all fickle. I, anytime I've talked about sex in here, someone wants to write, and usually some older person, and now I'm an older person. <laughs> and I didn't think that was very good. I brought my kids in here. Well, your kids can be in children's church. I, I, I don't think about that. I don't think about, are there kids in here? I think about, I'm talking to adults. And, and so we, we need to understand that we've made it. We, we, we've left the world alone to do whatever they want with it. How about money? Money can build churches and send missionaries out. Money is, is not evil, but some people use money to hurt people, to destroy lives. And a policeman can deter crime. And a judge can, ju can be upright. See, evil is always good that has been corrupted or prostituted. Evil always comes from something good God created. And there are orders of angels and demons. And so in angels, there's the seraphim, the cherubim, the archangels. They say the archangels are the, the best, the biggest. You know, Michael, Lucifer was an archangel who's Satan, Gabriel. So we, we know there's a hierarchy or an order, a ranking, if you would, to angels. Well, the same thing is true for demons. There's a ranking or an order of demons. The Bible says in Ephesians, excuse me, 6.12, that we, we, we fight against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places, evil spirits in heavenly places in the unseen world. And so there's an order, there's a ranking. These things are real. And if we're not careful, they'll influence us more than we would like them to. And so we need to come to a place where we understand that some people have and are being influenced by demons. Matthew 28, if you would, the book of Matthew. Cha no, Matthew chapter 8, I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 8. This is a touchy subject because we just don't talk about it a lot, so I'm trying to process you a little bit before I hit you pretty good here in a moment. The Bible says in Matthew 8, 28, when Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of the Gadarenes, Two men who were possessed by demons met him. They came out of the tombs and were so violent that no one could throw, go through that area. They began screaming at him. Can you imagine this? Why are you interfering with us, son of God? Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. So the demons begged, if you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. All right. Jesus said, go. Jesus commanded them, so the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. Then, then you would think the, the entire town would come up and say, you're God, let's worship you. No, that's not what they did. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone. He just did something that no one's ever seen. No one's ever seen because they didn't have authority like we had. In fact, in the Old Testament, it didn't talk a ton about the devil because he talked about the blessings and the cursings. So that's what he did. So when they were amazed, like, he has authority over demons, like, we've never seen that. He was trying, Jesus and everything he did was trying to tell them who he was. That's why he walked on water. He didn't do miracles just to show off. He did them for a reason. God put Adam in the garden and said, you have dominion over everything. Over everything. 
And so Jesus was showing them he has dominion over everything. He's the second Adam. He's the Messiah. He's God come in the flesh. And we need to believe that to be a believer. And so that's, that's what's happened. And so he casts out these demons from these men. And somehow we get this picture or we get people talking because they, they don't know what else to do, I guess. And they say, well, that's not for today. There's no demons today. Like, where did they go? See, we call we have a name for everything except for maybe what it really is at times. Now, I want to say this again. If your arm can be broke, your leg can be broke, your brain can break. I, under, I get it. But not everything is that. There's influences. We can be influenced by God or the enemy. And we can be Christians and be influenced by the enemy. How many of you have gotten so angry you've said things you totally regret? Come on. Yeah. You don't think that was God, do you? Okay. Dr. Jerry Robinson says there are 16 biblically named demonic spirits. Now, I haven't searched that out. I'm just quoting him. One of them is a spirit of divination, fortune-telling, Satanist, horoscopes. So if you're entertaining the spirit of divination, you're reading your stinking horoscope. Stop it. I, I can't tell you what to do, but I'm, I'm saying stop it for your own benefit. And if you really need someone to give you, just call me, pay me. I'll write it. Okay, dude, let me look. at. Okay, you're going to meet someone. She's going to be 5'5". Five, five. She's going to be beautiful. She's going to have a perfect figure. I can, I can write that. And so many of these guys that read them think, man, I'm going to marry a 10. Yeah, if you're a 2, you're playing out of your league. You're not marrying a 10. <laughs> Just, I don't care how many horoscopes you read. And for women, you know, I'm going to marry someone tall, dark, and handsome. What does that mean? Does that mean he's black, Spanish, good tan, went in a tanning booth, <laughs> turn them over, you know, so they get both sides? I, I don't know. I've never been in one, so... I don't know how they work. I'm looking at someone that has, because years ago we thought one of our leaders was doing tanning booths, who's Hispanic or Spanish. We're like, dude, you already have a tan. That's for white people. Like, you know, we don't have, we're, we're just white. We don't even like being white most of the time. But anyway, so because we're so ignorant of it, we thought they had to flip them over. So we were like, hey. What, how long do you go before they say, flip them, boys, flip them. We got to get both, cook on both sides. I... <laughs> I'm not even going to look at you, brother. I'm not. I'm laughing with you, not at you. <laughs> but there are familiar spirits. I'll go back maybe in another time and deal with these. There's familiar spirits, and that's a wizard, a, a magician communicating with the dead. Catholicism has a day for the dead. But divination says, you, you, don't, you don't talk to the dead guys. They can't hear you. It's, it looks good and it's, it's all mushy and it just seems so sweet. But we don't talk to the dead. And if you go to a 1-800 psych, psychic or you go to somebody in town that's a fortune teller and they say, yeah, this is Uncle Bob. It's not Uncle Bob. <laughs> it's, a, it's a demon. Well, how does he know stuff? Because there are familiar spirits that they kind of watch. They know things about us. There's a spirit of jealousy. No one seems to have a problem with these spirits. That's where murder comes from. Revenge, spite, anger, rage, hatred. So if you're, if you're a jealous person, it's, it's just not who you are. It's a spirit. There, there's a spirit involved there because we were never created to be like that. It's a brokenness inside of us. And God can heal it all. We can get rid of all this stuff. Then there's a perverse spirit. Evil actions. Atheists. People who are, believe in atheism. That they're atheists. People who believe in abortion. Murdering babies. Child abuse. People who hurt kids. Neglect. Reject. Molest. It's a spirit of perversion. It's, it's, a, it's a perverse spirit that would harm a child. You got to be perverse to think it's okay to kill babies. 
And our governor, think about it, she brags on how many babies we can kill. She's even bragging about it's tourism now for people to come from Texas and other places that have limited abortions. It's, it's, it's part of the tourist thing. Come to New Mexico, kill your baby. This is what's going on, why everybody, why the church wants to sit here and do this. I see no evil, I hear no evil, I speak no evil. And then a guy like me comes up and wants to talk about it. And then, and then you know what, I become, it becomes an anomaly, like, well, there's no one else doing it. Yeah, why is that? Why, why, why aren't there more of us in this city, in this state, standing up, telling the church it's time we get behind somebody that will be more about our values instead of using our tax dollars to murder babies? Doctrinal error. People who are off doctrinally. This, is, this, this comes from this. Perverse spirit could be sex. You could perverse sex. Perversion. Twisting the word. Chronic worrier. Because we weren't made to be warriors. Pornography. Homosexuality. And all the gender stuff. And incest. Folks, the truth is that homosexuality is a spirit. And the Bible talks about in Romans 127 that it changes them. You can go back and read it yourself. It, the spirit changes them. That's why men become more feminine, feminine than women. My wife and I were on a beach years ago in Mexico. And we were sitting on the beach because that's what we do. We go, we go sit on the beach. We play backgammon. We read books. We eat. And we just, just veg out. And we heard, there was, and, and the ocean's right there, you know, we're on the beach. And we heard this like scree screech, like, <laughs> like that. Like, and we're like, what was that? We look up, and it's two dudes walking. And I guess the female dude, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm not trying to be the female of, I, 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 acted worse than a little girl when the water hit him. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, how disgusting. <laughs> like, dude, I don't care what you're into. You're supposed to be a male, but, but you, you don't act like, we don't <laughs> like that. We don't, we don't do like that. You can only go like this, like if you're eating sauerkraut. Then it's like, okay. <laughs> but men become more feminine. And sometimes women try to be more masculine than men. And it's always amazing to me with, with the lesbian thing. Okay, so you get a pretty good looking girl and you get one that looks like a guy. Why don't you just go get a guy? You see, see, we don't, we don't want to talk about things like this because it, everybody will go back to their family. But when you get born again, this is supposed to be your main family. And then my other family comes in. That's why my wife and I, we've taught our kids our whole, their whole life. We ask you to do something, you need to obey us. If we ask you to do something against the scriptures, you obey God. But we want to all come back to how it makes me feel. I said this would go against your culture that we live in. And in Canada, it's even against the law to preach what I'm preaching. But folks, here's what I want to tell you. No matter how people become homosexuals, and the majority of them, there's a book out years ago, not from a Christian, that said 94% of all homosexuals were sexually abused. So no matter how you come, because here's the thing about the homosexual movement, they can't produce anybody. Two men cannot make a baby, and two win, women cannot, like, cannot make a baby. And folks, let me say this. Quit believing. The, the stuff the world's telling us now is so ridiculous, like men want to have babies. How stupid. I've watched my wife have babies. I'm like, woman, you messed up. Not me. <laughs> I, no. I mean, I, after watching that, I'm like, thank God you made me a man. Thank God you made me a man. Because I'm not tough enough to even do that. And some men said, I want to carry a baby. Don't be dumb. You can't. You're not. <laughs> and so it's a perverted spirit that perverts the truth and gets them to believe a lie. So today in our culture, if you even have a thought that way, that's who you are, which is a lie. Because Satan comes with thoughts and tries to get you to believe things that aren't true. And then you act on it, and then it becomes physical. Then it's harder to break. 
but you can break it. God, and so here's what the homosexual community has done over the years, but first they were trying to find a gene in the genome study that, that proved that people are born that way and they couldn't find it. Millions and millions of dollars later, there's nothing. Then, this is how I was born. Then, this is how God made me. Think of the evolution. Now, if God made me this way, then I'm okay. God never meant or made anybody with the thought they're going to hell. Because if you live that lifestyle without repenting, that's where you're going. Any lifestyle in the, that, that the God says is wrong, if you live that without repenting, yeah, but this is the way I think, this is the way I probably, it doesn't matter. And how absurd has this movement become where we have eight and nine and 10 year old kids that they're putting on this replacement hormone stuff or you know, giving them medicine to stop them maturing. And yet, we, we listen, it, when we, if, if we just listen to kids, every, every little girl would be a princess and every boy would be a superhero. But, but, but when you're a kid, you don't know what you want. You know, they watch Batman or Superman and say, I want to be Superman. Yeah, but we all know he can't be, there's no Superman. And we know every little girl is not going to be a princess. In fact, none of them are. But that's what they see. But yet that's who they are as kids. They don't know who they are. But yet now today in our culture, we have five-year-olds, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds that they're dressing little boys like girls or girls like boys because they come and say, hey, I, I, I think I'm supposed to be a girl. And, and instead of looking at the boy and saying, that's not how God made you. I wouldn't even let my son play with Barbie dolls. You say, why? Because he's a boy. Play with a truck. I don't, well, it's, it's a boy bar. I don't care what kind of Barbie it is. You're not playing with that. And he had two sisters. I said, oh, no, no, go play video games. And I, I didn't even like video games, but you're going to go do something boyish. You're not going to dress up little Barbie. I know people think I'm awful. I got it. But let me tell you something. Even the Bible and Old Testament, men should dress like men and women should dress like women. And that's all there is to it. And we, we need to understand that this spirit destroys, it's destroying lives. And the reason it's so rampant now is because we don't understand our authority. We should be praying for your children if they're that way or your family members. And say, God, I take authority over that spirit that's working in them, that's causing them to live a lie, a lifestyle. And the Bible says in Romans that if, if you're of that mindset, he turns you over to a reprobate mind, which means they don't, know, they don't have any right or wrong to them. In other words, they, everything's okay. That's why we have so many, what, 69 genders now. And God only made two. So the perverted spirit says, oh, no, there's more than two. That's why you never hear me use the word gay or straight because those are homosexual terms. They're the ones that coined those. I use normal and homosexual. And you say, well, you're going to hurt their feelings. I'm not concerned with hurting anybody's feelings. Here's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with that movement not destroying my whole family and all my friends and their kids. And because they can't reproduce, they have to recruit. And so how do they recruit? They recruit by what they're doing on it. Every show, every movie, there's always, and they always seem to be so happy. Can I tell you something? And if you don't believe it, go talk to some. It's a pretty miserable life. And it's very promiscuous. I used to talk to cops when I lived in Tulsa. They'd say, man, the bars they hated to go to were the lesbian bars. And I said, why? And he said, those women are vicious. So I said, what would you do? We'd get there and there'd be two women going at it because someone looked at their girlfriend. And I said, what would you do? And he said, we'd all sit and lean on our cars and wait till they're finished. <laughs> I said, but what if someone's getting beat up? That's their problem when they're done. You done? Okay, now we're going to take you to jail. 
but th- th- there's something wrong. And, 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 and in our society, we don't talk about it. So are you trying to say, preacher, that everybody that's a homosexual lesbian has an evil spirit in them? Yeah. They're influenced by one heavily, or, they, or they, the, 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 the enemy has just built such a fortress in their mind that they can't see anything else. But in them somewhere, they know it's not right. Because God put his laws in all of us. And if you watch TV long enough or listen to the media, you think everybody's that way. And probably less than 3% of our whole population is that way. God never made anybody to go to hell. He meant for all of us to go to heaven. In fact, hell wasn't meant for people. But we choose to go there because we ignore the truth. We don't want the whole counsel of God. And so, God never made anything evil or perverted. People take what God made good and, per- and perverts it. It's also an unclean spirit that either possess the person or they are heavily oppressed by it. Either way, these spirits change people's personalities. And people who don't agree, especially people who say they are a believer, to agree with homosexuality, to think it's okay, have had to defy reason and embrace a lie to quiet their accusing consciousness, their conscience. That's what they've had to do. And so, folks, we have a way to fight. You know someone that's jealous, that deals with that, maybe it's a family member. Man, you can pray with them. You can ask them or you can pray for them and and begin to take authority over that spirit. Folks, why would the Bible teach us about their spirits and then then we are are supposed to act like they don't exist? Now, this may seem foreign to you and weird or whatever, but in the reality, when you listen to the world, they talk about spiritual stuff all the time. The channeling stuff, talking to, you know, I talked to my aunt the other day. No, you didn't. You talked to a demon who's familiar to your family and knows your aunt. Doesn't know everything, but they know some things. Because they've listened, they've watched. We have to understand there's an unseen world out there that, that you have been given authority by Jesus and given his name to begin to fight back. And I, 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 I think the scriptures are so clear. But people want to twist them and turn them, and that's a perverted spirit that does that. Why don't we just take it for what it is? The word of God clearly says homosexuality is a sin. But what is our country doing now? We're embracing it. Why are they making laws for that group of people that's so small compared to the, how many people are alive on the earth today? And then trying to make it illegal to say it's wrong. Why would anybody do that? Because it defies reason. These folks are of a reprobate mind. They don't have a right and wrong. They don't have a moral compass. They just do what they want. This is what I think. And that's why the world is always telling you to live by your feelings. And God's like, don't live by your feelings. Live by the word of God. Let the word change your feelings. You may be sympathetic to somebody, and that's fine. And I'm not saying be mean to people. Listen, I never advocate that, those kind of things. Don't be mean to people. But when you talk to people, and I've talked to homosexuals, you can tell them the truth. You don't have to be that way. God didn't make you that way. But the world has convinced us that that's how he made people. And that's okay. Somehow it's okay. God only honors marriage between a man and a woman. Now our world and our government may honor marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman, but it's not a real marriage, not in, front, not in God's eyes. God doesn't recognize that at all. That's why he made two genders, male and female. That's why he made them where they fit perfectly together. He gave one a seed and the other fertilizer. Come on now. That was good. You got to admit that was good. It just came right out. That was just good. I'm kidding. To reproduce what he created. And anything that goes against the reproduction of God's decree, go be fruitful and multiply. 
And you know what? Every homosexual couple, lesbian couple, that adopts kids, they ought to thank God for all the heterosexuals. Because if it wasn't for them, there'd be no kids for them to adopt. You see, this whole movement is meant to destroy the very fabric of family. To change the whole meaning of it. That God ordained. And we have to learn to fight back and push back. We have to learn to talk to our kids straight up. And say, listen, this is wrong. Yeah, but this way I'm thinking. Yeah, but you're thinking wrong. It's a lie from the pit of hell. But because we don't know our Bibles, how do we fight our enemy? How are we, we stay ignorant of his ways and his devices? And, and, and the world now is trying to convince everybody that it's just normal. God did it. God made it. What a, what a blasphemy. You talk about blaspheming God to say that he made something evil. He didn't make anything evil. And I hope and pray that we would all catch on and start saying, you know what? I'm going to start praying more. I'm going to start taking my authority, praying for my family, my kids now, praying for my grandkids, praying for my friends, my in-laws, my siblings. You know what? When my brother was an alcoholic and a drug addict, we didn't like it. And we didn't go help him drink and do all that. And then he got delivered because we all kept saying, you got to get free from that, man. He told my wife and I the story the other day, a little bit of it, how it came to be that, and then he got, he got kicked out of his AA class, his meetings, because he got up and said, you know what? My name is Brian Smotherman. I'm a delivered alcoholic. And they're like, oh, no, you can, you can never be delivered. Well, that's not true. If you know the Word of God, you can be delivered from anything that hurts you. God's Word... God's word is powerful, and it's the thing we need to learn. You can go back and read Romans. This is, all, this is all through the scriptures, folks. Well, Jesus never used the word homosexual. Yeah, but he used the word fornication, which means any sex outside of marriage. Well, well what is the only marriage God recognizes between a man and a woman? So you can be a man and a woman having sex. If you're not married, it's fornication. You, you, you're in sin. You'll die. When you die in that sin, yeah, but I love God. No, if you love God, you get married or put a ring on the finger, sing the song, whatever, or you would just say, okay, we're going we're gonna to move out. And you can get married here pretty quick. All you got to do is call. If you say, hey, man, I was in church. My girlfriend and I, my boyfriend and I got convicted. We need to get married. Well, come on. We marry people all the time in here through the day. Just bring, bring a couple witnesses. And if you don't have witnesses, we'll witness for you. We got you covered. God is the one who frees us. God is great. God is always good. And he's for us. We just got to know the truth so we know how to combat it, how to fight the war we're in. And we're fighting for our kids because the enemy is deceiving them. Every show, even look what Disney is doing. So all these characters we grew up with, now some of them are going to be homosexuals, lesbians, and bisexuals, and transgender. Folks, it's not normal. Do you know why transgender people, the ones that had the operation, have to have, take medicine the rest of their life? That, by the way, the government wants you and I to pay for. Do you know why they have to take medicine? Because their body sees whatever they did to him as an injury and it wants to heal it up so they have to take medicine to stop it from doing that even your natural body because the body's not born again it's the heart that's born again even the natural body says it's wrong it's against nature just a thought father in jesus name i thank you for being here thank you for teaching us and thank you for helping us father i know this is a, a message that we're not used to hearing help us process it, meditate, and come up with the conclusion, God, that you would have us come up with, that your word is true every time. And that, Father, the culture is anti-God. It's of the spirit of the antichrist, the culture in our world today. So, Father, help us to stay sober-minded. Help us to believe the truth and stand for righteousness not be mean, because it's not the meanness of God that leads to repentance. It's the goodness of God. 
And if you're in here, Father, if there's people in here that are fighting that, that are dealing with the homosexual stuff, the lesbian stuff, they can be free, they can be healed, they can be forgiven if they want to be. It's going to take some work. But they can be free because whom the Lord sets free is free indeed. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom from what the bondage is that the enemy puts on us. So, Father, free us. Help people. Help, help, let them know that we're here to help, not hurt. I'm not trying to condemn. I'm just trying to teach. That, God, that we have authority over these things. That they're not, they're not from you. They're not just things that happen. And regardless of what happened to these children, that they grow up and become this, God, you can heal that too. Help us to live more the way you want us to live in Jesus' name. If you're here with every head bowed, quickly. If you're online, just steal for a moment. And you say, preacher, would you pray with me? I walked with God, but I walked away. I want to come home. Preacher, would you pray with me? Today, I'm going to give my life to the Lord Jesus. I want to get right with him. I want to be saved. I, I want a relationship with God. And the only way you have a relationship with God is through Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, there is no relationship with God. You can't have one. Not the true God. Not the God of the Bible. The only way to have a relationship with the Father of our Lord Jesus is to receive Jesus. He's the only way. So if that's you and you say, Preacher, would you pray with me with every head bowed and online, same way. I'm asking you to do the same thing. I can't see you, but God can. If that's you in here and you say, Preacher, pray with me. I want to get my life right. I want to get it right with God tonight. Preacher, would you help me? Would you pray with me? I'm ready to give Jesus permission to my life. If that's you in Jesus' name, right where you see it all over this place, listen, here's all I'm going to ask you to do. It's very simple, but it's very profound. Gives you a moment to say, I don't care what anybody else thinks, I want God in my life. And it lets me know if I'm praying for anybody. If that's you in Jesus' name all over this place, you say, include me in your prayer right now. You ready? Without any hesitation, in Jesus' name, would you just lift your hand up and say, it's me. Pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Am I looking across? God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm looking across. the. Thank you. Thank you upstairs. God bless you. I'm going to look across the top real quick. Is there anybody else up there? Just lift up your hand. You can put it up and put it down. I just want to see it. And it gives you a moment of clarity just to say, I just want God in my life. I'm going to look across the top. Anybody else that has not lifted your hand, you want to lift your hand. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? On the bottom section, one last time. We're all going to pray. Thank you so much over here. God bless you. God bless you right here. Thank you. God bless you over there. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Anybody else before we close? This is, God didn't make it hard but it's real. Anybody else? Here's what I'm asking you to do. If you lifted your hand, I want you to pray. Thank you so much. If you lifted your hand, I want you to pray this prayer out loud, loud enough for your ears to hear your voice. The Bible says we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth. And I, and I, I want everybody in here that's right with God to pray with us, all those who lifted their hand. And if you didn't lift your hand, but you, you know you should have, man, I'm gonna introduce you to Jesus. He's the Savior. Would you pray with us? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he's your son. And I believe he's Lord of all. So with my heart, I choose to believe. And now with my mouth, I willingly confess. Jesus, be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And now I thank you for leading me. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's thank the Lord.